All right, what is up, everybody, on a Friday night? Welcome to the live stream. I know we got a lot of racing going on this weekend, so if you're tuning in, I greatly appreciate it. Uh, we got special guest Howie DiCivino the third joining us on the stream in about like five ten minutes. Uh, so we'll have him on talk a little bit about his career, life, um, maybe next year goals, and all this other stuff. Uh, so it'll be a really fun time. Also talking about some NASCAR news because we have a lot to talk about this week. Um, lots of stuff to talk about lots of controversy and also predictions we got to share our championship predictions for all three series if possible so we'll get to that um but yeah we also have um rj stark um uh, i already am gonna say his name wrong stark star Sebeck. there we go i'm going to be joining the show as well part of the toby christie crew very excited to have him make his first appearance on etyl as well um i'm gonna bring in we're just gonna start bringing in the crowd and then we're gonna bring in howie uh, so let's start with um etyl veteran adam adam what's going on what's up reporting, reporting for duty ma'am <laughs> how you doing i am doing great it's friday evening just got done with work going to be a great weekend. Forgot to go. I know. It's lo lots of racing. I mean, tonight, we decided to move the live stream up. If you just don't know, truck is tonight at 10. We're crowning a champion tonight. So very excited for that. But yeah, very, very cool. We'll bring in Ben, too. Um, ben, a little newer to ATYL, but we still love them. Hello. Oh, Hello, my. everyone. Hi. Hi. How are you all? I'm, we're doing great. How are you? I'm good. I just found out that Mark Martin's on Cameo, and I'm really excited now. You're kidding? So, <laughs> no, I just found this out. So it's a good day. Yeah, we were talking before the show, super sick Mark Martin shirt, and I might, I might steal it from you at some point. I can just give you the link to buy it. It's not that hard. Okay, then yeah, I'll find. <laughs> oh, so it's like, it's a, okay. I, I, like if you want to drive down here and put in the effort, that's fine. But like, you know what? I think I'm okay. It's fair. So. I think I'm okay. You don't well, feel like committing a felon. I got you. <laughs> I don't I don't want to commit felonies. I'm a little against that. Just surprisingly, I am. Just a respectable. Bit. Yeah. Respect. Respect yeah. for Russell. <laughs> let's bring in let's bring in someone new to the show. Not new to tobycrazy.com at all. RJ. Um, let's see if we can hear him. RJ, you got us. Oh no, RJ. Talk RJ, no. Talk to us RJ, we're driving. hard now. We'll drop him out for a second. Ooh. Make sure to select your camera and everything the right make way. Make sure to select your camera and mic and everything. You gotta enable it. So oh, my Arca brother in Christ here. We'll keep him in just to see, just to see. And if we need the RSVP, we can for sure. Um, but yeah, I was um, talking um, a few minutes ago. Um, how is know going to be on the show? So if you have any questions for him, bring him in the chat. Uh, and we'll definitely ask away. It's going to be a really fun, chill conversation. Uh, and then we got some NASCAR news stuff to talk about as well. Lots of controversy this week. Maybe some heated opinions. Um, if Dom joins the show later, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure he'll have some heated opinions. Um, and then I think Rob is joining as well. <laughs> so, if you hear the meow, we know he's here. We know he's here if we do. He's here um, in but, meowing yeah. spirit. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so so we'll see uh, a little bit later. Uh, if Everyone joined. It should be a full house tonight. I think so. So that'll be cool. Um, and also bringing up our championship picks. Um, I want to hear yours in the comments as well. Uh, when we go a little later, some people are going really bold with their championship picks, and I respect it. Like for real. Some some of y'all are like, I'm going with like what my brain thinks is going to happen now with what my heart wants this year. I've been broken oh, hearted many times. Oh. RJ. Oh, we no, got, got audio. RJ. We got oh, that audio. Oh, Look, it's it's the first time I've ever used um, Restream. Uh, it's a great great platform, uh, but that was the you know as a newcomer, it was hard. And and I know I know Ben's been a bit, big advocate of me getting a new microphone, so hopefully I sound okay. You sound, sound perfect, good. Ben. I've never seen your setup, but that looks incredible. Thank you. I try. Um, He's professional. Gotta, uh, so now I got to figure out the second half, which is the video. So, well, while you figure that out, if people don't know you, which if you follow tobycrazy.com, you should, but tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. So, uh, I do basically writing for Toby. I've done the, the, the biggest thing that people might know me from is an Instagram page called NASCAR port. I've run that it. for like six. It's been a thing for like six, seven years for now, but you've probably seen it in the last few years. Cause it's really taken off. And I'm very thankful for that and been able to be, noticed and approached by people like you know mamba smith and toby christie and and everybody here at tobychristie.com 
And so it's been amazing to have, you know, the outreach like that, that the page has grown and it's been great. And yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of majority of what I do. And obviously I do art coverage for tobycrazy.com, which was me and Ben have been doing since about two o'clock today, having some fun. So <laughs> now, now we're here on above the yellow line. Thank you so much for having me. Of course, RJ, you are a legend. Also, um, just, I don't know, you do really great work. We appreciate you. Uh, and also very cool to have you being on the show. And of course, you're always welcome back. Just let us know when you want to be on the show. Awesome. Too. Oh, Dom in the comments. NASCAR report. Let's see. Hold on. NASCAR report has the best sneaker game in the garage. Hands down. I got to say that's true. <laughs> RJ got drip. RJ Her. always has <laughs> drip. I always, I always bring my Jordan shoes out for uh, Sunday Cup Series race day. But, you know, you always, you know, you, you're always at the racetrack trying to get some work done, everything like that, and have some fun. Oh, but yeah. sometimes you got to. You got to plan your outfits out. We all do that. You know, I, I know, you know, Ben's got the Mark Martin shirt going on looking great. And everybody, I like the Red Bull racing hat as well. And Taylor, is that, I, I, is that a Budweiser shirt? Oh, yeah, it is. Here, let me, oh, let me shit. like get up my chair like tell, squeaks, it. but here we go. <laughs> yeah, everybody got great yeah. outfits going on. I dressed up this episode because I missed the Halloween episode that I was going to Oh, you to. did? I did, but I'm trying to get my camera to work. Oh it's not God. it's not super crazy it's just a suit and a hat but that's you know, okay I, we it still appreciate it. i wanted to show up in style make my debut in style and uh I love we, got, it. we got a lot of action to come out including howard de savino coming on the show i think that's Absolutely. fun i'm glad i could finally make it because i thought the arca race was going to be late at night and i was like man another week i can't make but then the arca race was at two it's over it's done it that happened earlier all the fun um so now i'm here well, we appreciate you joining us. Uh, yeah, a lot more fun to come with Howie DiCivino. We'll probably bring him in now. Let's bring in Howie. Um, introduce himself a little bit. Howie, what's going on? Hey, how are y'all doing? Doing great. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate you. I know you're busy, so I appreciate you taking the time to join the crew here. It's a, it's a Friday night. I'm not busy. <laughs> I'm not busy. Everyone knows what, what, what we do on Friday nights. Party. Chill. Exactly. Party Either and chill. <laughs> yeah, lots of chillaxing. So for those of you who don't know Howie, don't know his story, Howie, mm -hmm. if you could give us like an abridged like little paragraph, something you would tell somebody about yourself if they've never met you. Um, I'm Howie DeSavino. I'm a NASCAR driver and uh, I like to go fast and turn left. That's, that, that's, that's my paragraph. I don't have a thesis for, for this paragraph. That's good. I like that though. Very, very plain, simple. I love it. <laughs> so I want to talk about your, your start in racing to kick things off. And then I'm sure we'll go off the rails a little bit, Howie, but um, you weren't born into a racing family. Um, I'm curious, like the first race you went in, like, how did you get into that car? Like who, like who, who helped you get there? What was the result of that first race? And how did you know you wanted to go like pro you wanted to do this full time? Yeah. You know, uh, I first fell in love with, with racing, watching it on TV, and then we finally went out to Richmond Raceway, which is my home track, and um, saw these little arena cars, and four years later, uh, my dad finally bought me one, um, and for a small little car, they're pretty expensive, I'll say yeah. that. So, you know, we, we got it set up by the guys that said that they said was the best and whatnot, and hopped into the race car, started you know, I think fourth in the B main. So I was in a slow group, finished second. I, I thought I was the man. <laughs> I thought I was the man. I didn't get my trophy until later on that season, but I was the man. And um, ever since then, you know, just moving up through the ranks, uh, you know, you fall in love with racing and then you want to go pro. And you moved up the ranks really fast. I mean, you started racing at age 13, correct? Correct. And then – you know, uh, ARCA 2019, 2020 truck series debut. And now you're at Xfinity. How, how did you go from like 13 years old, just starting out to like now where you're in like the second top series of stock car racing? How'd you get there that fast? Yeah. You know, uh, Taylor, you know, him very well. I know him very well. Yeah. <laughs> My man, Austin Terrio. Um, he, he's put me in cars that, you know, I'm, I'm able to perform in. He, uh, he sits there, he coaches me a lot. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, we don't always get the result that we want, but with that being said, you know, we we're still in, in, in the top tier and, and it's been a fast paced career. So hopefully I can just kind of simmer down in the Xfinity series and kind of, you know, learn these cars. Nice. So I kind of want to ask just for curiosity, 
Um, talk about just growing up in the short track scene on the East Coast. Like, just talk about like what that was like for you growing up. You said you didn't come from a racing family, so just like, what's that like when you're not from a racing family and not from a racing background, and you decide, hey, I'm gonna do this, and like, I'm sure was it a culture shock? I would have to say, or oh yeah, for sure. You know, I mean, it, it, it's difficult because. I've driven stuff my whole life. I grew up on a farm. As a matter of fact, I'm on the farm that I grew up on right now. Nice. So, you know, it, it's it's one of those difficult things to where, you know, I grew up racing four-wheelers and, you know, dirt bikes going fast constantly. You know, tractors, obviously those are not fast, but still driving something big. Um, and it was one of those deals to where, you know, once I wanted to start racing, my dad finally said, okay, well, this makes sense. Um, you have a passion for it. And then, I got good at it. And he, he said, okay, I, I, I see a career coming out, out of this, you know, uh, the family was pretty, was really supportive about it. You know, they, they weren't, you know, Hey, I don't want you racing or anything like that. Um, but it was a culture shock. Cause you know, we're not used to it. We're, we're not a sports family at all. I mean, I play basketball and football. Now I personally think I can make it to the NBA if I was a little <laughs> bit taller, but that's just because I, I grew up playing basketball my whole life. <laughs> nice. So, Howie, question for you: um, when, when you were running the uh, the short track uh, stuff as a kid growing up, who was your hero? Who did you look up and aspire to be from a young age? Right. You know, I, I grew up in the same town as Denny Hamlin. Um, <sighs> It's not Denny Hamlin. I was going to put that out there. It's not Denny Hamlin. Damn, yeah, I mean the first half, not going to lie. <laughs> um, but Dale Jr. was my guy. Yo. You know, um, he, was, he, was my, he was my guy. You know, I went to Richmond Raceway. He signed my hat. I got a lug nut from him. You know, everything just, it makes sense. So, you know, I actually raced against him this year, and that was one of the best experiences ever because – I, I mean, we were at Martinsville and he was on my outside and I was like, well, I'll qualify him. So that's cool. And then when I saw him on my outside, I said, he's going to get me on the outside and I'm okay with it. Like I'm, I'm generally okay with it. I'm going to sit behind him and learn. So, Have you ever gotten to talk to him? So no, I did not get to talk to him. Oh, man. Look at list. Got to do it next year. Yeah, he's absolutely. racing the two races next season. Xfinity. Yeah, right. Exactly. And, and the hard part is about it is, you know, at Martinsville, you know, everything's so fast paced there. Right. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, you have fan, he, he was, he was holding his daughter. He was signing, you know, uh, stuff for fans. And I was like, you know, right now is not the right time for me to introduce myself. You know, I'm gonna let him do what he needs to do and, you know, handle everything. And, but yeah, I mean, I, I would love to sit down and have a conversation with him. Mm -hmm. Is there another driver that that's not Dale Jr. But that you would love to meet like past or present that you just love to have a conversation with? Oh, there's, there's plenty. There's <laughs> plenty. I mean, right now, I mean, I have not really met him, but Kyle Larson, I would love to meet him. Beautiful. I'm very good friends with his spotter, Talamon, but he just won't invite me over to his house. I don't know what's going on there. Very rude. <laughs> Get him <laughs> over, guys. You know what? I'm going to text Tyler right after this. I know he has a truck racer spot. I'm going to text him right after this and say, hey, what the hell, man? <laughs> <laughs> like forget about the truck race just make this happen let's let's all have a dinner just, get I together exactly to <laughs> <laughs> that is cool that is cool i mean i have bush beer in in the bar his his wife loves a shotgun bush beers so there you go okay, we learned bring, we you could bring it as a gift y'all could be doing shotguns exactly. is that your drink of choice my bush drink beer? of choice yeah we we have yeah. a thing with bush beer on our show I that it's my drink of choice. Not only is it the official beer of NASCAR, oh, of course, but it also has camo on it. I love camo. I love to hunt. And on top of that, it's just uh, it is what it is. I just love it. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So I'm curious. Uh, I grew up a farm kid as well, and I always like asking this question: What was your least favorite chore on the farm growing up? Then? Oh, that's good. My least favorite chore? Yeah, like least favorite thing you had to do on the farm. All of them. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, all of them. Same. So, but you know, growing up, I, I think that made me to the man that I am today, right? You know, um, I mean, in the winters, I would have to go clean out the chicken crap in the in the chicken coop. You know, that's not fun, especially in the summer when it's all hot. Steam just oh. rolls off mm -hmm. of it. 
God. Taylor, I know that I know that, that, that you don't like me going graphic, but I'm, I'm not have to at this point. <laughs> I mean, like to be fair, I mean, obviously, I didn't grow up on a farm, but I went to my grandparents' house all the time, and we they had a chicken coop, and then unfortunately, coyotes got the chicken coops and the chickens and everything. Shoot them! But no, see, yeah, yeah. yeah we did. I can't, <laughs> I can't, I refuse. But, uh, but yeah, the the like you saying that just brought the smell right back. And it's oh. gross. I'm just a chicken coop. Actually, you know, <laughs> when I when, when I leave my house, there there's a, a farm down by uh, just a little bit down down the road, and they have cows, right? And during the summer, <gasps> I love. I always have my windows down. I love that smell. Oh, I, it's something <laughs> weird. I I have such a weird like taste and smell. Like I I love skunks. I, I, I love the way that they smell. I'm not gonna lie. It's kind of a thing. Like it, it's, it's not a, a bad smell, it's but not. it's like it's really not. As long the as skunks it's not is a little weird. The cows, like but, yeah, I, my one of my favorite smells growing up was cow feed. Like I love cow feed. Like the way yeah. it smells. So, yes. Oh, well, okay. So so if if we if we're gonna talk about weird weird smells, my mom always <laughs> when my mom always had nail polish re- re- remover, and when I tell you that I would just sniff it, and my mom's like, "You need to stop doing that." I was That's like, not good for you. No gasoline i didn't care <laughs> i was yelling i was like i was like six, no, six years old i, was like, I don't like the smell of this yeah that's just getting you ready to get inside a stock car basically exactly oh yeah oh yeah yeah so uh, you talked about um hunting too and like so if you had to choose between like living on a farm or like living in like a city but then going hunting on the weekends like what would you do like if you had to choose between like your love of the farm life or hunting what would you do the farm because i hunt on my farm there we go it's a lot easier the city, I can't stand the city. I really, I can't. can't do I, it. I don't, I don't like being close to people. I like my privacy. You know, like, like out here where, where I'm at right now, I, I could literally grab a gun right now and just start shooting. It. You know, and and that's what, and you know, when you live in in like a neighborhood, you can't do that. I don't. I'm right. not a big. I'm not a big big fan of having someone super close to you. That's fair. I need my I need my space from from just people in general. Is that why you've only ran like rural based races this year? Like, <laughs> like looking at the racing reference, it's Martinsville, which is like the middle of nowhere. You have Talladega, which is also the middle of nowhere. Kansas is a little bit more middle of nowhere, but still middle of nowhere than Loud. Is that why you you just run the middle of nowhere races so you can be out of the city? I got told to wear a race, but you you brought up a very good point. <laughs> it's valid. What was your most uh, challenging race this season? I know both Martinsville races were a little interesting for you this season, but and then what was your favorite race that you ran this season favorite race this season uh that's, my favorite race was was loudon was i good. really i really enjoyed that i got my my Oof. first top 20 in nascar ever so that oh, was fun. nice i believe rj and i talked before is it martinsville or loudon or was it dega me yeah i think yeah. we just talked what two weeks ago yeah. was it, is it yeah two days, two weeks ago? yeah yeah it was oh, right. Wow. No, it was before Martinsville. It was before Martinsville. That's right. Wow. Right. I thought it's been more uh, longer than that. Huh? Isn't that wild? Time. I'm getting old. I'm getting <laughs> too old. Nice. Oh, you can't <laughs> tell ago me anything you're old. about being old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know everything about it. Sir, you were uh, born after the year 2000. You're not getting old. Uh, 2001. Same difference. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I will God. say the first time I met Howie, I was like. Like, uh, I kept calling him kid, and I'm like, Howie is 21 years old. I am 22. You are not a kid. You are 21. No, he's a kid. He's a kid. Yeah. But hey, I'm fine. Yeah, you man. guys are all kids to me. I'm, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that, that that Taylor and I had a little come to Jesus talk on, on her calling me a kid. <laughs> yeah. He was like, hey, <laughs> chill. Oh, chill. My gosh. I, I said, woman, I'm not a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I know I need to stop. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's how I talk. What can I say? What can I say? I guess there's something I'm curious about, Howie. Um, do you have any race day rituals? Oh, that's good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, now that I have a beard, um, shave it the day before. I don't I don't shave on, oh. on race days. I wear so like, the same. I like clean shaven or just like t- trim it up a little bit. Trim it up. I'm sorry. I trim it. Oh, and then I, I, okay. I shave okay. down here. We need to know your exact ritual here. My exact ritual? Yeah, the exact. Not okay. don't, not graphic. Now don't, just, don't disclose anything that could yeah, don't you know, disclose. be like a, just, like it's your like secret secret. 
but like stuff that is okay. <laughs> oh, 100%. All right. So for, for, for qualifying, I wear Under Armour boxers, right? But they are the light gray. So that's, okay. for, that's, that's for qualifying. Okay. And I wear Quaker State um, socks, and they are green. Wait, hold on. Are these uh, like the Quaker State socks from like like the fans get on race day? Are you talking about those? Yeah. Oh my gosh, those are my race day socks. <laughs> and then race day, I wear Under Armour boxers. Okay. That are dark gray. Okay. Oh, with wow. Pennzoil socks. There so, you go. <laughs> and, and but you know, I I go through the exact same same deal every every time. You know, I uh, I cut my nails. I don't know why. I just I don't like being in, in the race car with my nails long. I don't like that. It feels weird to me. Um, you know, I, I eat extremely healthy that week, and I'm drinking water light like crazy. So there's no beer mi mixed into that, maybe. But you know, um, you know, uh, try to go out to eat at least once to just relax, and then train every single day. That's that's pretty much my my rituals. So what is your training uh, process leading up to a race? Right. Yeah. So for, for me, I, I work out with Hunter Smith with fit stop performance and he is my trainer. He, he's trained some pretty well-known guys like, you know, Cody Ware, Corey LaJoy. And now it, it, it's, it's me and some other guys like Spencer Boyd, Ryan Vargas, which I think y'all had Ryan Vargas on uh, a did. week ago. Like, or something two like weeks that. ago. Two weeks ago. Yeah. Right. So, you know, I work out with Vargas all, all the time. Um, and basically, I show up, and he says, "This is what we're doing today." And I go, "Okay." <laughs> so, and you're ready to go. Yes, sir. Oh, I, <laughs> oh, I, I, I love working out so much. It's that's one of my uh, favorite things to do. Nice. So, would you say it's like the holy trinity of hobbies is like uh, farming, hunting, and working out? Fishing. Is that like your main three? Fishing. Yeah. Okay, fishing. Yeah, fish in there. Got it. I got a fish quad. too. The holy quad. The holy quad. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I'm a, I'm a pretty simple man. I, I you know I I, <laughs> mm -hmm. I it doesn't take much to please me. That's it. Yeah. it's, it's, and then I was also going to ask too because I don't think we've discussed this either. But you hunt deer, and do you hunt anything else? Whatever's in my way. Okay. Well, <laughs> dark. I, but all right. I have a, I have a great story for you actually, I, and and I I know that we got a little bit of time, so I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you this. I, I was hunting with a buddy of mine. And uh, his dad just just got in his stand. He was climbing up the tree, I, and I could hear him. And we're walking down this road. We have a little green light, like right here. It's muzzleloader season, so we're shooting a black powder fifty cal. Oh, mm -hmm. you've told me this. I know, <laughs> but I got to share it with with everyone else now. Continue on with the world. So bad. Share, share to us. <laughs> and Go ahead. so, and it with his light, we saw there's two eyes about a hundred yards out. And so I, lo I looked in my scope. I'm like, mm, looks like a squirrel, man. I don't know. But it just kept pacing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Eventually, it got so close. It was 20 yards away. I looked in my scope. I see the tail. Oh, that's a fox. And I was like, and I don't like that. I don't, I don't like something being that close. So he, he's like, man, shoot it. I'm like, man, I'm not wasting a bullet. Like this, like this bullet costed $1.95. I'm not doing that. I mean, because, you know, a 50 cal bullets, that's some serious stuff. Like, you know, mm -hmm. they're yes. expensive. And so he, he was like, man, shoot in the face. What if it has, it has rabies? I'm like, you know what? You you gave me the go. I cocked back the hammer. I bow! Shot it right through its uh, nose. and went down through its esophagus, out through its um its heart. That's graphic. And <laughs> then so I'm looking at it and just on, on the ground shaking. I'm like, ah, oh, well, that's unfortunate. And then so I looked at my buddy. I'm like, man, I'm sorry for ruining the hunt. You know, like like the fifth cow is loud. And I was like, man, I just ruined the hunt for us. It's not even daylight yet. So next thing you know, I'm I'm texting on my phone. I'm I'm in a blind, and I look up and there's a six point buck walking out. I'm like, oh, this is my first buck. I'm gonna kill a six pointer. I put it right in my sights, and my buddy was sitting in the direct side of me, 300 yards away. And he took a 175 yard shot on a 10 point buck right when I put that deer in, in my scope. And so, next thing you know, I hear, wah bam! And I just hear something flying past me. What was flying past me was, was a bullet. You uh -huh. know? <laughs> oh, man. And, uh, and I called him, and then I was like, hey, man, I said, uh, 
<laughs> did, did, did you get it? And he was like, yeah. I said, okay. I said, that's good. At least you, you got something out of it. Because I was like, because you want to be having a phone call with me if, if you missed it. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, I, I got I got plenty of stories like that. I I mean, I shot a doe one time. We were running dogs, and I shot a doe, and my buddy's dad now was on <laughs> the other side of me, and they were running dogs, and I, and I bloody up this doe. I shot her really, really good, and I hear boom, 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 and I just hear pellets flying past, like, in trees behind me. You everything. guys need a system here. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and so I went on the radio. I said, who's right next to me? And then And then my buddy was like, oh, it's me. I said, Hey, really quick, you need to get about a hundred more yards away from me with, with with your shotgun, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that episode of Parks and Rec where they shoot Ron in yes! the back of the head. Yes. <laughs> right. Yes. Oh so God. I've had many, many experiences that <laughs> that, that that will that will just make you pucker up and go, okay. We'll move away <laughs> from it, but okay. <laughs> Understandable. Okay. Well, wow. I said I said the same thing to his dad. I said, Hey, did you get that dough? And he was like, Yeah, man. I said, Okay, if you were if you missed by a few feet, you would have gotten me too. So, <laughs> Just, oh my god! Wow. Yeah, this Jesus. is why I live my life not dangerously, and I'm not a fun person because of it. I just I don't like that. That's scary. Taylor, you 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 watch you watch NASCAR. You got to live life on the edge. I, don't. I would pay money to watch you go hunting, Taylor. Nope. Fact. I mean. That would be like a quick review for ATYL and Toby Christie. That would be epic. That's so, the next. That's the next staff meeting. Is we're gonna go hunting together on a retreat. Let's go, I'm, Virginia. Let's go. Let this come on. With Howie featuring Taylor Kitchen. Oh, Howie. <laughs> now, I would vomit, pass out, or both at the same time. I don't think that's possible, but either or and both. Can we film it? No. Please. <laughs> yes. We could do a pay per view for it. I will say when. We had Dylan Mama Smith on the show. He was like, Taylor, we're, we're, you and I were going, we're going drinking. Let's go. And after the stream, I was like, I hope he knows I don't drink. Like, I don't party. I don't do anything. And everyone's like, such a Taylor, such a buzzkill. I'm like, man. So, yeah. I just, thanks, Howie. At least go to the party. Jeez. I, I know. I could, I could make <laughs> least, show up. Right. I'm I mean, always like the designated driver. Just show up, drink lemonade, sweet tea. I don't, wait, you're, you're in Ohio, right? Huh? Do you live in Ohio? You yeah. Said? Yeah, okay, yeah. y'all don't have sweet tea, so I uh, yeah, 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 I got nothing. Sweet tea here? You not sweet. Yankees. That's not real sweet tea. <laughs> okay, it's sorry. not real sweet tea. A McDonald's real. sweet tea is you, not good. You gotta enough. come to my neck of the woods for the real sweet tea. Gotcha. Where are I, you from? South Carolina. Oh, okay. South yeah. Carolina. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> you go, oh, okay. <laughs> well, Twenty minutes south of Charlotte. Yeah, we're we're uh, just across the the state line. We have well, real sweet tea. RJ, do you guys have sweet tea in Florida? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think that's that's all my mom drinks is sweet tea. So, uh, so you're not a sweet tea drinker. Florida's kind of a smorgasbord. Of <laughs> we got everything. it. Nah, yes, yeah, there, there's a lot of different types of sweet tea out here. So, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my you, mom's I mean, a big sweet tea person. Everywhere we go, uh, gets herself a nice little sweet tea. I've never been a sweet tea guy, huge sweet tea guy. I tolerate it, it's not bad. What's your beverage of choice then, RJ? I'm a lemonade Lemon. guy. All right, that's that's fine. That's fine. I'm a big yeah. lemonade guy. I know. I know. We're talking about parties. I think I finally got my camera to work. I'm dressed. See, I'm dressed for the Halloween party last week, as you can see. Yo! Let's oh my go. God, Archie! Got... The man, the myth, the legend. Yeah, I didn't make it to the Arch. Halloween episode last week, so Swag Daddy RJ in the house. Oh my God! I had to do what I could here. I wasn't I expecting this. Were you wearing this today? We were covering Arca, or no, no, just put it on. Just put it on. <laughs> <laughs> I could not wear this for six <laughs> hours. No way. See, so, that's why his his um uh, that's why his camera was off because he was changing into it. Yeah, well, no, I, I, had this on, no, I promise you, I've had this on for the last thirty minutes. I could not get my <laughs> camera to work. First, I finally got my microphone to work, but now here I am finally. So, thank you all See, for having me. Of course, you know Howie. We were talking about your that's a polo that you're wearing. Like your what? What did you call it before we started this all? It's Western oh. style. Your Western style. Um, I think you've been shown up severely, severely by the swag that RJ has. Just saying. Yeah, put that comment there. That's what I was about to say. People, people are gonna think I'm like the Undertaker here with my blue lights. (laughs) Yeah, that's what I thought. The dollar store (laughs) version of the Undertaker. All right. Well, you know what? The next time I come on, I'll put on a straight suit and tie, and we're we're gonna make this happen. Can we do that? Can we all wear suits? Everybody wear suits. Can we? I will do it. Let's go. It it will will be like I I promise. It'll be so immaculate. It'll be like the prom day. 
Can we do oh. ATYL prom? No. I mean, I do, ha- I do have connections in the fashion world. Oh, my gosh. So yeah, let's get, during let's, the off-season, this is a thing. We're making it a thing. <laughs> Howie, you're coming back. <laughs> yeah, I got a whole collection. I just chose the black one because I'm trying to look like my costume is like Mafia Boss or something. I don't know. Oh, I like mafia that. Boss? Ma- mafia or something like that. That's what some one of my friends told me when I dressed up like this, and I was like, "All right, that's what that's what we're gonna." You call know, it. our our last names we we could definitely be the mafia. Oh yeah. Oh, you could. He's good. He's good. Nice. 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 I like that. But yeah, I was tell I was telling how when we were recording off the record, I was like, you know, I'm trying to do some shows where I go and visit either sh- like team shops or driver like places where their homes, and and they take me through a day of their life. So I feel like some, at some point I'm gonna find myself up there. See, RJ, we'll you and I can make out. a trip of it. We'll both go. We'll have We're to. We're gonna all have to let's, go. Let's go. How was gonna have to show show us the ways? Because yeah. it seems like everybody here in the chat wants to see Taylor Hunt. So that's not at all what should happen. I'm sorry, chat. Please, please. Let no. I I'm gonna go fund me. Everyone. I think I think let's I get a couple of DMs from Rob and Dom confirming they want to see Taylor Hunt. Oh yeah. No. Yeah. No. Taylor, have I, you ever I, held I a gun in Taylor. your life? I have. I have. Shocker. Um, I Like I said, my grandparents, they have like, I don't call it like a farm because they don't have animals or anything, but it is a farm. They have a lot of acres. Um, and my grandpa t- taught us how to shoot guns. And um, I think I did it like once or twice and I stopped because I was like, I'm, I'm good. I'm more so like bow and arrow. Like, I have a bow but- and I have an arrow. There you go. See? <laughs> that I Okay, that I think I'd be okay with. I don't know I why. I just can't get up close to the animal. I you, I you, you would be shaking so know. much as soon as something walks out. I trust me. Like I would run. There, there was I'd one run. time a, a, a doe walk, walked up on me. I was shaking so much that you could hear the ladder shaking. <laughs> oh, man. You, it, I mean, you get that, that, that fever. I promise you. It, it's, it's difficult. You know, I, I was going to ask you, because I know we've talked about this before, but I feel like you need to explain it to the audience here. Like, y- y- you hunt deer, but you also eat it, too. We talked about your famous uh, uh, venison tacos. We have NASCAR Taco Bell Cup Series in the chat. We love this guy. Um, I feel like it's only fitting that you talk to us about those tacos. Right, yeah. I mean, <laughs> they're great. <laughs> all, you, all you gotta do, very simple ingredients. Butter and pan. You, you oh, that's it. Up, what's that? Okay, keep going. Sorry, go ahead. And then you then you put the venison in the pan. You chop it up. You make it look like ground beef, and and then you know it's cooked. You put some fajita sauce or taco seasoning on it. See now, see now you're making you're making me hungry. I might I might just start have have to start cooking some, something here in a minute. And then you you get a little tortilla wrap, throw it in there. You put some cheese on it, some hot sauce. You fold it up like like chipotle, you're, and you're good to go. Dang, Quick okay. and easy. So, is that the Quick that's the only food. thing you cook with the deer right now? You need. Oh no, 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 no! I made I made deer burgers, uh, deer steaks. Oh. Um, my my main one deer deer tacos. I like that a lot. Uh, that just sounds good. Actually, I might have to try it someday. I'll try okay. it someday with the deer. I guess I shoot myself, according to everybody here. <laughs> <laughs> I then guess. you have to field dress well, it. Here's True. the thing: though, when you shoot it, that it's yours. You can say, "Wow, I just provided this incredible meal, not just for myself, but then there's plenty of other parts of the deer that you can eat at a later date." Right. And on, and I mean, on top of that, you know, um, is 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 one of those deals, especially for for me. You know, I, I provide it for my friends if they didn't get a deer. You know, I provide it for my family. You know, uh, down and. Charlotte, where I, where I live, I'll provide it for Austin. Um, so, <laughs> you know, I, I, a lot of my buddies, I mean, I, I've, some of my, my buddies down in uh, Carolina, they're like, hey, man, you know, you get a deer, deer this year. I'll pay you for the, for the processing bill. Mm-hmm. And if you bring it down here, I'll, 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 I'll take it all. I said, okay. Well, last year I got 50 pounds. It was $95 for 50 pounds of meat. That's a steal. Wow. That's, That's a great. That is a That's a really good deal. Right. And so I was like, all right, cool. I said, well, you know, it's a four hour drive. So you got to pay for shipping and handling as well. You know, it's my time, my money, my gas, but <laughs> you know, yeah, uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I, sure, I certainly enjoy a lot, you know, and I was talking to RJ about this. RJ, we got to go hunting, man. We got to go. I know I'm, I'm down. 
I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I want the drivers to take me through a day of, of their lives. So this sounds yeah. pretty, pretty fun. I'm, I'm always up for new adventures, you know, so I'm I down. hear you. Well, you just, just can't wear that. And we're good. But, oh, uh, I ain't wearing it. <laughs> oh, Gotta get camo. Camo will <laughs> on you. Right. I think this, is cowboy time. <laughs> this, this, this suit is hot. Thankfully, it's gotten a little, a tiny bit chillier in Florida to where I can pull this off for a second here. But yeah, tiny bit, maybe like mid 70s. That's <laughs> We'd love chilly it. for us. <laughs> RJ, can I ask you a question real quick? Yeah. Who's the who's the guy or the figure in, in your background there? So my room here obviously is on camera a lot. I don't know how much you know goes on, on off the record here. Ben loves the the red, white, and blue fedora there. That's, the that's fantastic. Fantastic. I had it there one week. It wasn't supposed to be there. One of my friends like left it there for me and I was gonna take it down, but Ben noticed it and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna leave it there then. So let's stay there ever since. It's the guy that's Kevin Harvick. That's a, a oh, board great. I got from the team that they gave to me when I was like, I think I got that when I was like seven years old. And oh, so wow. I've just kept it ever since it sits there right there. And then I got little posters and plaques uh, in the background. I need to do some more work here with, with the room memorabilia and stuff like that possibly. But yeah, that's, that's a lot of people always ask me that, especially people who are here that don't know anything about NASCAR. Cause I've had that for a long time. So everybody, everybody knows the, the big stand. I just tell everybody it's Kevin. So everybody just calls him Kevin. Oh, it's it's like it, he's, he's not in a fire person. suit, so it, it's like it's like just, it's just a guy. It is odd because they don't know it's a NASCAR driver because the dude's just wearing a t-shirt <laughs> and, and jeans <laughs> in the uh in the in the in the poster. But it's I'm like, yeah, that's race car driver. <laughs> whenever people see race car drivers on commercials or anything, they're always in their fire suits. Anytime yeah. public, like everybody's always wearing their fire suits, everything. So like that's the rare, like, you know, time you get to see a race car driver just Chilling wearing a t-shirt right there. Kevin me. Harvick in the wild. Yeah. Harvick in the wild. Now exactly. is that RCR Kevin Harvick or is that uh SHR Kevin Harvick? That is RCR Kevin Harvick, because I think Whoa. that was, um, that was about I think the poster, yeah, because I can't remember. It was it's definitely that that thing's about 10 years old at least. So Dang, yeah, it's RCR right. Kevin Harvick. I think there's a 29 on like the side of like the sleeve oh, of the yeah. shirt there. Can't remember, Good. but yeah, RCR Kevin Harvick. It's a it's an old one. How I wanted to talk to you about your bar. You um, before the show, we did a test run, seeing if how we could like do this show in the bar. But you don't have Wi-Fi there. But you put to, I'll see if I can find a picture of it. But you you put together a bar um, a few weeks ago, or been working on it for a while, and it has a whole bunch of racing memorabilia in it. What what all do you got in there? Uh, just everything off the cars I have destroyed. You know, um, whether I I can I can successfully say I have a piece of every league that i've raced in that's really cool so i have it from arena racing weight models to arca to trucks to, X to xfinity now so i just added the xfinity bumper from martinsville because oh yeah <laughs> if anyone saw that big pile up unfortunately buddy was involved in it so that was a large okay, at least you didn't get punched by austin hill so oh yeah, yeah. at least you get punched yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, you know what's crazy? I don't, I don't know how Myatt did not see that coming. I mean, no. he wanted that thing up like this. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Is this is <laughs> no, there oh, it is. Oh, yeah. Okay. Nice. That's, that's awesome. I like yeah, the arena the racing car. That's awesome. Oh, that's rad. So, are we all invited to have a drink there at some point? <laughs> Anytime. It's packed always. Let's go. You just gotta, you just gotta let me. Know. Well, Taylor, you don't party. You always said that you don't party. So I mean, I, I'll invite I mean, everyone else. That's fair. Yeah. That's fine. That's cool. I don't have to no, go. I'm joking. Hey, well, hey, <laughs> really, really quick. Taylor does have something that I really do want, and it is a Bush Apple cooler. We're bringing this up here, aren't we? All right. And no, we're 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 bringing this up because I offered you a hundred dollars for it, and you and you still you still said no, and. Uh, so I'll make a bet. I'll I'll take every, uh, everyone can come down to my bar whenever they they, they want. If you want to show up, you have to bring the the bush apple cooler. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, I I don't know if anyone here knows the story about that or anyone in the comments, but I, um, Kevin Harvick, by the way, um, signed up for one of like the bush beer like uh, contests that they had on race day. It was like you had to tweet the number four every time that there was a lap that ended or began with number four, or whatever. So I did that for every single freaking lap of the race. And afterwards, I got like a message on Twitter saying I won. So I got the cooler in the mail. Um, I sent some money with it, too. And now 
in the cooler. Um, I will admit, uh, there's no drinks in there. I keep my board games in there. So a little bit of a sin, but <laughs> she has it's so a, cool. She has a Bapple cooler, a Bapple cooler. Uh huh. Yeah. It puts board games in it. <laughs> well, I will say to be fair, when I went to Michigan, went to the race at Michigan, we filled it up with um like drinks, body armor, not a sponsor, but could be, um body armor. We had some um bush apple actually in there too. Um, so we brought okay. some things. I I sipped a little. You know, it, it's all good. It's all good. We're good. Howie, you want to be the only one that has offered her money for that cooler? Oh yeah, yeah. I I had a uh, like a jealous fit of rage during yeah. that whenever that race was because I was doing the exact same thing almost simultaneously with Taylor, just tweeting out the four, and she gets it. I don't. She she's like the queen of winning giveaways. I don't know what it is. I can't. I cannot tell you how, what, or why, but it is true. I just. It just happens. Oh. We have some questions in here for you, Howie. Oh, do we? We do. Okay, so first off, Deer Jerky. We talked okay. about this before the show, but have you tried making it? I've not tried, tried making it. Um, I'm not one of those guys to, you know, want to do that. You're not one of those guys. I'm not that guy. Um, Let's see. Have you, you ever eaten Deer Jerky? Good of question. course I have. Okay. Just can't make it. That's a process. Can't make it, but you can get it. Like it. I don't have a smoker. Partially. Then, gotcha. uh, that's valid. Um, and then do you have any other favorite beer besides bush beer, Howie? Taylor, I told you this that earlier. <laughs> I think I told everyone this. I do not care what beer it is. As long as you bring me open one, I'm good. That's all it is. <laughs> now, I, I mean, I do like Corona to me. I don't like. I, I don't I don't like like Corona, but I'll drink. I'll tolerate it. I will tolerate it. But you know, uh, like hazy IPAs, I, I I can drink. There's this one IPA called Ass Clown. I really like that one. I don't know why. <laughs> My right, dad likes yeah. that one. It's pretty good. It really is. It really is good. It has an awesome name too. Yeah, I want to point out. Um, the, I want to point out. We've had like a twenty minute conversation about drinking. RJ is eighteen <laughs> and can't drink. <laughs> so he's just like, yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing with <laughs> RJ, like. RJ, you carry yourself like you are like 21 plus. I know. You do. It's crazy. You do. Everybody. RJ, you're only 18? No way. That was yeah. The funny story is I spent about 25, 30 minutes talking to the owners of this team called 3F Racing that's coming to NASCAR. The guys from Germany, uh, they have a new yes. team. And they're, I mean, they, they love to talk. They have a really, like, they seem into it, man. So I was talking to them at Homestead for a good 30 minutes. And right at the end, they were like, oh, you know. When we, I was like, when we, we, if we get our first top five, then we're all getting drinks, the three of us, because there were two owners. And I, I was like, look, in three years, if you guys get a top five, then legally I can do that. So we'll set it up <laughs> uh, for the future <laughs> and have some fun. But live yeah, no, it's weird. Years. Everybody you always thinks more. Huh? <laughs> no. He's got live Everyone thinks I'm much older than I usually am. So it was funny. I think, what yeah. was it? Um, was it Charlotte? When we had the group chat. Charlotte. I think it was, before I really knew Ben and Taylor, it was the first time I met you guys and somebody in the group because I got put in that group. It was our, our work group. And they were like, yeah, let's, you know, go have a business dinner tonight. And then somebody, was it you, Ben, that said that? And you were like, where can we find a bar to drink? Well, I was like, and let's then, find like a, a brew house or something that like has a wide menu, has alcohol if you want it, whatever. And Toby was like, okay. And he named a place. And then he goes, well, actually, one of us in here is not 18. And I was like, what? Like, like, excuse me? What? Yeah, I wasn't even 18 then. I was 17. Now yeah, so we got you the kids Jeez. menu and the coloring book and everything. It was fantastic. They did give me a kids menu for that. For that. I don't know, yeah, I won't forget that. Got crayons and everything. God, you guys are making That's me good. Man, <laughs> I'm like a grandpa tonight. <laughs> I know. Y'all were all yeah. talking about age. I was trying to set up my camera and I was like, hmm. You're like, I, I can't figure this out. Adam. <laughs> Adam. I was born in a year that Dale, Dale Earnhardt won a championship. That's how old I am. So 94. Three? Was it three? Whoa. Yeah. You're my Maybe sister's two. age. Gross. There you go. She I was born kid. when Kurt Bush won the championship. Mm, He's still going. Yeah, Jeff Gordon won it yeah. that year, but on my birthday, Mark Martin won the race. So. Ooh. See, my birthday is like during a time where there's no Cup Series racing, no NAS NASCAR, which kind of sucks. So, so my birthday yeah, is always usually was always on a Richmond or Darlington race, uh, September first, and so, like, 
a few years back. When was this? When was the race when Kevin Harvick and Ross Chastain got into it at Darlington? I think Ooh, that was, that was oh, like 2018, 2019. Yeah. yeah. So Kevin Harvick yeah. was my childhood guy, right? And Ross Chastain coming up through the ranks, I liked him, and I thought he was really cool, and I got to meet him um, before, like, 2016, 2017. So, you know, I really was a fan of him and his family and everything like that. So my birthday race at Darlington, Kevin Harvick and Ross Chastain are battling for the lead. I'm like, man, this is – this is a really sick birthday present, man. They got my two guys up here battling for the win. Like, this is crazy. Oh, no. Like, one of them's got to win the race, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Neither. Neither, no. neither won the Absolutely race. They ended up beefing after that, too. They wrecked each no. other. So, that was – it went from very high to very oh. low very fast. Oh, like, man. Oh, okay, I can – now, the, here, here's an even more old fact for me. So, the first NASCAR race that was run when I was alive, uh, Rusty Wallace won at Rockingham. Oh my God! <sighs> wow, Adam. Also, yeah, right. I, I feel oh my ancient. God, we Here, love you. Top, I got the top okay. five too. The top five was all right. It was Rusty Walls won the race. Dale Earnhardt, Dang. Bill Elliott in the number eleven, oh. Harry Gant, and Mark Martin. Oh my God! Just the Bill Elliott running Junior Johnson's eleven is already yeah. dates that pretty rough. I'm not gonna lie. Wow. That was a Budweiser car. That was a Budweiser car, I think, wasn't it? Was Wait, it when was that race in the season? If that was '93, uh, it was October 24th. That was the end of the year. Okay, was I was I was oh. gonna say you were alive when Alan Kowicki, you, you like shared the plant of Alan Kowicki and Davey Allison, then, but not okay, quite. You didn't. Not quite. Man, yeah. Howie, question for you. What's up? We were talking about Chastain um, Harvick, a little rivalry there. Is there a? Do you have a favorite rivalry in NASCAR? Maybe got to stay off the topic of present potentially, but like you can dive into that if you wanted to. A classic or rivalry or a I, classic rivalry. Oh, I mean, classic or right now, I I think you know, I think everyone is uh, beefing with Ty Gibbs right now. That's gonna be a good rivalry. <laughs> that's valid. Yes, that's a valid, yeah. that's a valid one. Everyone you know like because I was racing that race and I saw everything and right in front of me. So. Yeah. Okay, so that I have an, I have a question leaning off that, oh. and I, ben, well, I'll preface, in, has, in, I will answer anything that, that you have for me. It's okay. Dangerous. Uh, I'll preface. Has anyone? Does anyone here know of the podcast Dinner with Racers? No, I've you've talked to me about it, it though, it. Ben. It's a great podcast. Highly recommend it. But they ask this question to people off the cuff, and I always I'm curious. Howie, I know you're still new, obviously, to to the Xfinity Series and Truck Series and stuff. You ran a limited schedule. Uh, who's the one driver you want to punch in the face? Oh my god! <laughs> it can be someone you've raced this year in Xfinity. It can be trucks. It can be Arca. Yeah, it can be trucks, car store. Well, trucks already have it for you. Um, <laughs> no. For Making trucks, his enemies. No, oh, so if you don't want to, let him answer. I want to know. Listen, he is a very, very good buddy of mine, but he pissed me off so much at Bristol. If y'all watched that race, it's Spencer Boyd himself. Oh yeah, no well, workout buddy. <laughs> He is my workout buddy, and I'm, 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 I'm going to tell you this straight up. Me and Spencer, we, I mean, we have talked about it to this day. I, I mean, I had a run on the outside, and I asked him earlier that, that week. I said, hey, man, around Bristol, it looks like everyone can get a run on the outside. Said, yeah, if someone's on the outside of you, like, they'll, they'll get a run. I went on the outside, and he went up to block. I hooked him. And then so either oh. my truck goes in the wall to unhook yeah. myself or I spin him out. Mm -hmm. I destroyed his truck. Um, yep. yeah. and so with that just being said, he got out, he wanted to fight. I was like, dude, I'm ready to destroy you right now. Like, I'm ready, <laughs> like, I'm ready, man. And oh <laughs> like, like, think about your car and think about right now. But again, we resolved all, all, all those issues. I love Spencer Boyd, I really do. He's a great guy, I love the guy so much. But that was the most furious I've ever been inside of a race car. Oh, man, dang, fair, understandable, man. So like frenemies. frenemies, frenemies, right? No, I mean we are yeah. we are really good friends now that we don't race each other. <laughs> but you know when we did race each other, I mean we had something going on. I'm like, man, I'm I'm just gonna lap you. This, this is race. And he's like, no, I'm gonna lap you. I'm like, we'll see. You know, and <laughs> so like we would have that friendly, you know, rivalry. And then, you know, um, yeah, he got wrecked. So then, <laughs> then that's when you know uh things started to turn the other way but but then we thought about and i was like man i'm not gonna fight you for 28th place 
Mm-hmm. I'm not, yeah. not fighting for 28th place. If we were leading and that happened, I can understand that. But we but we really got into like the we we talked it out and we were good afterwards. That's good. That's good. So what, what was Martinsville pit road like? Because there was so much stuff going on there. Good Did you question. see anything from your own eyes, like when you got out of the race car? Or, I mean, what was that like? Ah, uh, well, see, it was it was tough because I had to keep my car rolling because I had no clutch for half the race. Oh wow! So yeah. I just put it in first gear and let everyone pass me uh, coming in, so that you know if I need to scoot up. If I if I had a roll, I would have it would have to be one aggressive roll. If that makes sense. So I just kind of let everyone go by me, and then I just came into the pits and parked. So I I, I did not really um, see much of it. Um, so you're the but, guy that's pulling into the party 30 minutes late, and all the cops are there busting everyone. Then basically, right? <laughs> that's how we. <laughs> Understandable. Oh man. So, so right. I'm I'm curious also. Um, so you've ran mostly short tracks. From from what I can see in racing reference stuff like that from the, the data, so I'm curious what it was like to go to Talladega and run that for the first time. Man, that was the most boring race possible, and I said that on on the radio. I mean, there was no action, and I even yes. said on the radio, I'm like, guys, when's the big one coming? <laughs> Give me some excitement. Give me something, please. And it was like, it's half the field that are sitting there, like you know, like oh man, what are they, like they're nervous, so like when are they gonna wreck? Oh no, like and then how is? Well, like, I will say, when this are they gonna Xfinity wreck? race was not the most fun. Like this most recent one that you were in, it was not oh, it the was most awful. fun one. So, yeah, and, 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 and the thing about it too is, I got a speeding penalty on pit road, so I had to go a whole lap down, and oh, I was gosh, like, yeah. so I'm just sitting there riding, and, and when, when I tell you that my foot was my my braking foot was just relaxed, I was literally just just driving. Just mm-hmm. and I and I <laughs> said on the, on the radio. I'm pretty sure Taylor heard me say this because she listens into my radio. I said, "Hey guys, it just feels like I'm doing a uh, Sunday drive at 200 miles an hour. Yeah, th- th- this is boring. <laughs> Understandable. Yeah, I mean, I was I was pretty transparent on that. I was not very happy with where with how we we were running. Your Martinsville radio was especially fun to listen to. I'll give it that. Yeah, I bet it was. <laughs> I bet it was. <laughs> Do we also, keep a track of how much swearing there was? The, oh, there was a lot. There was a lot. <laughs> was there? I don't remember half the stuff I said. Good stuff. You weren't like bad on the radio, I should say. Like it, it was like you were frustrated. If you mean not having the club. Very, too, very frustrated. It's, it's short track racing. That's what it is. Right. Tempers, frustration. Right. I mean, it, it was just one of those deals where I, you know, I told my guys five times. I said, hey, guys, I, ha- I have no, no, no power. And they said, oh, keep going. And eventually, we're, we're getting a restart, and all my power goes out. Yeah. Oh, like, solid. I have nothing at all. <laughs> solid. Nope. They just whoop. And so I pulled into to the, to the pits, and they're like, why are you coming in? Like, they came on the radio. And I said, hey, guys, for the fifth time, I told you I don't have power. So what do you want me to do? <laughs> you know what I mean? Wild. Like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> Understood. What about um, your experience on the intermediate track? I think we you had mentioned or Ben had mentioned racing reference that you raced at Kansas this year. Right. What? Because yeah. uh, that's that's not a short track and that's not a super speedway. So what was that experience like? Scary as hell. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine that that is a wild track. <laughs> yeah. Um, in practice, I was hitting the brakes. I'm like, oh, this ain't. I'm not. I'm not normal to this. <laughs> Right. Oh, yeah. And they're like, no, man, you got to stay in the throttle the whole time. But, you know, you just got to let off a little bit. I'm like, oh, are mm-hmm. you sure? Are you like, for sure? Yeah, man, you have to. I'm like, okay. All right. So then my coochie comes on he, and he's like, Howie, we got to pick up a second. And he was like, so yeah, you got to bail it off in there. I'm like, uh, mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> go in, go into the, to the corner. I let up just a little bit. I'm right back in it. And um, that's the first time I've ever, you, like, have you ever heard the you know saying your uh, ass pucker up? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, it yeah. puckered my seat with it. Nice. <laughs> Solid. Yeah. And Solid. I was, I was very not very. I was, I was scared. Mm-hmm. I was actually scared. I was like, th- th- this is not how it should be. And was that your first mile and a half? Uh yes, it was. Okay. Oh, so, like, that's probably oh, then. No, it's not. Ma- 
in oh. Xfinity, it was it was my first mile and a half, but trucks okay. is way different because you have so much more downforce. I was about to say because trucks, from what I've heard people say, you basically hold it flat foot wide open and right, yeah, exactly. So it's but you know, with a car like this, yeah, it was I I was I was not happy. I was pretty but now I know how it feels, so I'll be okay for, for next season. So we'll nice. be good. <laughs> Do you like how the trucks drive better or, or how Xfinity drives? You know, I, I've, I've talked about this a lot. You know, I, I think I talked about it with, with RJ. Um, you know, trucks, they are just so – they're sucked into the ground so much to where they stick so good. Xfinity is the hardest car I've, I've ever driven. It doesn't matter where you put it on the track. They are hard to drive. They have a lot of power. They have just a they're they're top heavy. They just mm -hmm. they just are not like a regular stock car that you would expect, right? Mm -hmm. Well, question following up on that too. I mean, I've thought about this and I think this has been brought up by other drivers in media like the past few weeks, but like that transition going from like Arca to truck to Xfinity. Like, do you feel like that system is helpful right now that NASCAR has? I think that it should be, be put in place to where you can't go from Arca to Xfinity, personally. Oh, I, 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 I think that you should have to go through the ranks. You know? I mean, we, Ty Gibbs kind of didn't follow that role, though. Like, he ran X, or he ran Arca for, like, two years, and then has – which, granted, I mean, if my grandfather owned the team, too, then, yeah, I'd buy an Xfinity ride in a heartbeat. But, oh, like, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm just being wow, honest. Man. like. Yeah. I'm honest about it, man. If my grand, if if my family owned an Xfinity team, my ass would not be in this chair right now. I'd be in Phoenix having the time of my life. <laughs> um, but like, it, I, I I hear that a lot. Like, you know, you bring up that point, and my mind immediately goes to Nick Sanchez, who we've right. seen win the Arca title this year and go out and well, he struggled at some of the races that he's ran it for Big Machine Vodka Racing or whatever. Like, he's done fine in the others. But now he's. Like, Truck 2023. Yeah, yeah he's full-time right now officially. I, I just think it, it's it's weird because I could I don't think that I was able to jump from Arca to Xfinity. I had to go through through trucks, I believe. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why I, I feel like if they're gonna make me do that, then they need to make everyone else do that. Mm -hmm. Right. There, there, there should be no no double standard. I know and I understand I didn't run the the I, you know, I don't have the funds to go out there and run the full Arca Menard series because yeah, what you're paying for Arca yeah. is the same you're, you're, that you're paying for trucks. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, does it make sense to stay in Arca? No, I would rather go to a, 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 the NASCAR top three tiers. Mm -hmm. True. And in trucks, I ran trucks. I got approved to go to Xfinity. So I uh, race in Xfinity now. So it's just one of those deals where I, I think that you should have to at least get your feet wet in every single um, series moving up. Just if, if someone's going to make someone else do it, then everyone has to. And, but I understand the whole Ty Gibbs deal. I, I, I do get it. But if he was forced to, to, to drive trucks before he went to Xfinity, I think that, that, that there'd be a, a big difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, and you bring up a point too, along with that, like talking about sponsorship, you've been pretty candid in all your other interviews that you've done about like, you know, sponsorship, how tough it is. You know, if you're not like at Chase Elliott, uh, at Ty Gibbs, you're not like one of those names that have been in the sport for a while. You don't necessarily right. have that guaranteed backing going into it. So right. how do you approach like finding partners for yourself going into even just like 2023? How do you approach that topic knowing that you haven't, you know, you're not like a racing family? Yeah. You know, um, I mean, it's very simple. My dad does his work and I do my work. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I promise you, I'll, I'll be, I'll be racing that next year. I'm not worried about that, but I'll at least do one race next year. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, I talked to RJ about this as well when, in our interview that was two weeks ago instead of, you know, months ago, but, um, <laughs> you know, it, it's hard being a no name and mm -hmm. it's hard when people, when you race for, you know, a team that can run good, but then just stuff happens to where you don't run good. Because mm -hmm. that's been my whole season, this whole season. I've only had one good race, and that was Loudon, right? And, you know, I don't think that really partners or sponsors look at your finishes. They look at how much TV time can I get? What can I, I, I get out of being a, a, a sponsor or partner? And this and that, but you know, it's hard when I don't have the daddy's money. I don't have grandpa's money. I don't have that type of deal. 
So that's why, you know, I'm thankful for, you know, Richard Green Racing, which, by the way, mm -hmm. you know, he unfortunately lost his, his brother this past week. So please, so please pray for him and, and, and their family. You know, Travis Mills Foundation, you know, Keys Travel, you know, Mass Mutual, all these guys have been behind me for mm -hmm. quite some time, and, and they don't understand how much of an impact they've made on my life and how they've taken me to where – to places to where, honestly, it should be impossible for me to be in NASCAR right now, but uh, I'm doing the impossible. So, you know, that, that's why, you know, I, I'm working with, you know, a team and, and with my team and, and we're going to find partners for next year. We're going to make it happen. But uh, that, that's just the sad part about the sports. It's not about talent anymore. It's about who, who has money. And, uh, you know, money's a great thing until you don't have it. It's valid. Yeah, that's that's like one more thing on that, too, is that's why I feel like a big reason why we've seen different, you know, people going from Arca to Xfinity or or trucks straight to Cup or something like that. Just just weird kind of we're not seeing as much as through the ranks. I feel like it's because of that whole money situation, too, is like people find something like an Xfinity ride and they just one opportunity they take it you know, or they find mm -hmm, right. a truck ride after not doing any ARCA or anything and they take it, you know, we've see, I feel like we see a lot of that nowadays than in past. And maybe that's why we're not seeing people go through the ranks. And then, mm -hmm. and then something I want to mention earlier, then you have people like Todd Gillen who went from trucks to cup and everyone was like, what the hell? Like what? Yeah. That was <laughs> yeah. a big joke. never seen that before. <laughs> big joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely, it, I mean, you have to take any opportunity that comes your way. If you're, if mm -hmm. you're allowed to take it right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that's, I mean, Taylor, that's to answer your question. You know, I mean, you, if you, like I said, I mean, when you have money, it's all great. But when, well, once you don't, you know, uh, mm -hmm. your dreams can come down real quick. Mm -hmm. That's true. It's very true. Well, Howie, I have one more question for you. All right. um, I know 2023 plans are not set in stone, but what are your goals for 2023? What do you feel is most realistic for you going into next season? Right. You know, uh, that's a great question. Personal goals is I, I want to run full season. But that goes back to our, our, our last conversation. <laughs> got to get the money, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and figure it all out. But, you know, that that to me is a realistic goal. You know, I, I, I talked to a bunch of, of companies, you know, and I have a great team behind me that, you know, helps me out throughout, you know, learning how to do business and all that stuff. And, and you know, that's, that, that's the hard part is you have to become a businessman within, you know, seconds and so mm -hmm. you know um that's a realistic goal for me is to run you know half to full season xfinity um i do not know um you know what team we're, we're going to go with or, or whatnot it just depends on who's full who's not and that goes back to the opportunities whoever has an open seat yeah true get that opportunity take it Absolutely. exactly i like it well, I said one more question. We have one more in the com. We oh, we have a few more in the comments. We'll we'll get to the comment questions here. Kyle um, asked, "How do you feel about Cup drivers racing in the lower tiers in one-off races? And who was your favorite Cup driver you have raced against, other than Junior at Martinsville?" Oh, um, I don't mind it. You know, I, I mean, they they. If they want to go practice and go run a race, like, you know, William Byron's came down to Gene, to Gene Motorsports a few times this year, you know, Kyle Larson. I mean, I understand it. They, I mean, they're, they're just going out there for checking flags. I don't blame them. I, I would do the exact same, same thing. And, but, you know, if it was a weekly deal to where you're running, you know, um, Xfinity and you're also a cup driver and all that, like then, then I, I see it being a bigger issue. Uh, my favorite guy that I raced against, uh, that was a cup driver, I believe, in all my races besides – it says besides junior. Yeah. Still, would have to be loud, and that was William Byron, and that's yeah. the only other cup driver I've driven, driven against. Hmm. Look at that. Who do you think you like your closest friend you've made in the Xfinity garage, or just any garage for that matter, over this year? Oh, Patrick Emmerling, um, Ryan oh, Vargas, okay. you oh, cool. know, uh, a bunch of those guys, you know. Okay. Nice. nice, nice. Well, right. Howie, we greatly appreciate your time. Thanks for chilling with us on the stream, and you're you're always welcome back. So just let us know, and we'll we'll dress up in our suits, <laughs> and, and we'll have you. another party. <laughs> party sounds good. Well, I certainly appreciate all y'all taking y'all's time out, out of y'all's day to uh, 
sit here and have a conversation with me and whatnot. Um, I'm going to go get ready for muzzleloader season tomorrow. And uh, <laughs> I hope everyone has a great night. All right. Thanks, Howie. Thank All you, right. Thank you. We're always pulling yeah. for you. Let's Appreciate go. it. Y'all have a great night. You too. All right. Bye. That was Howie DiCivino the third, folks. That was fun. I love that. I think he gained a fan in me tonight, honestly. I knew he nothing did. about him. Great. Yeah. I mean, that was that was one thing that really like when I heard he was coming on here too. Like the I felt like the conversation we had on off the record was really fun. Like he's a really interesting mm -hmm. guy, really fun guy to uh mm -hmm. to talk with. And hopefully, hopefully I and we all can go up to Virginia one day and hang out with him. Experience honestly, a day no, in the I might have to give him a call because I can probably drive <laughs> to where he is. I mean like same hours, yeah. Get some can't get some relate. Control. I'm down here south, but you know, yeah. I mean, I'll could drive, could, maybe. Could. Could. I think I the thing I appreciate before. about Howie is, I mean, he's very relatable, I would say, and just, just down to chill. I, I feel like there's a lot of people, no matter what profession you're in, that just take it seriously. Like, just don't have any fun. I'm one of those people. But, Adam, you good there, bud? <laughs> you're good. The camera must be drinking the bush light apple. I am not. Okay. I am I'm chugging my H2O. Yes. Water. Oh, yes. Water. Is that a speed channel? Oh my God, that's a speed channel. Where did you get that? Crowd bubble? I got this at Speed Street in downtown Charlotte in 2009. Oh my God. You're joking. That's nope. awesome. No. They were literally handing them out by the hundreds to so many people. It was actually the day that they had uh, the old trackside live show. It was uh, held in downtown Charlotte. It was like yeah. one of the last times it was there. That was one of the craziest atmospheres. Like I missed that trackside live. That that needs to come back. Someone's it, break. Well, they talked about it with Marcus Smith and Dale Jr. Yeah. on the download. Excuse me about like maybe bringing mm -hmm. that back or like the want to. Yeah. So maybe. It, it, it was like it, it's magic that you would have to catch and bottle at that time. I don't know if it can yeah. be repl replicated mm -hmm. though because the. The personalities that they had were just phenomenal, and oh, knowing, God, yeah. and mm -hmm. personally knowing one of those personalities, that that was like just an even bigger kicker. Wait, who did you know? Steve Burns. Mm -hmm. Nice, Steve's the yes. man. R.I.P. He, he was someone who I looked up to and kind of one got me started looking into motorsports journalism. So he 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 was legit the most genuine human being that you can meet. Like just like you could mm -hmm. talk to him about stuff that was not racing he was a massive football fan and he actually nice. met my stepfather uh when he was working for fox he was doing a one-off nfl game for the minnesota vikings and carolina panthers and my stepfather mm -hmm. he worked for the carolina panthers for a number of years and nice. they met before the game and they just started chatting and they exchanged numbers emails and then mm -hmm. led to a beautiful friendship yeah so i was very very lucky and fortunate to to know him during his height so that, that mm -hmm. was that was always cool to always cool to know that yeah oh I know that guy yeah he's mm -hmm. awesome <laughs> nice pit reporters are the nicest people I feel like man like anytime oh, yeah. I've met them at the track Dave Burns uh, Vince Welch I'm talking about Josh Sims uh, Josh Sims recently. is fantastic Josh Sims is amazing awesome. man like those pit reporters Jamie Little as well I've had her on one of my previous she's podcasts. cool Claire I mean, B Lang from Sirius XM has always been nice to me. Yeah. Everybody is so just so nice, yeah. so welcoming. Um, I wish I could talk to Shannon Spake because, like, she care she covers most of the Carolina Panther games. Yeah, and she like stands like I kid you not, she stands like right here behind me on the sideline because I because I work on the sideline for the NFL and like you can see her walking around just hovering around. It's like man, I know you from TV. I want to say something, but I can't because mm -hmm. I gotta work. <laughs> I work on the sidelines for the NFL. I do, yes. <laughs> what a flex. Awesome. So wait, I know, Taylor, I know you want us to get this stuff, but I'm curious. Who is y'all's Mount Rushmore of, like, NASCAR reporters then? Like, who is like, oh. the people you look up to the most? Oh, do this to me. I'm doing it, yes, I'm doing no. it. Because I have mine. Like, so. TV? TV reporters? TV, or, like, radio, uh, oh, like, pit reporters, re journalists, oh, whoever. Like, who God. are the ones you look up to? Ooh. I have a few, Start with Bob so. Proggers, because he's the GOAT. The myth, uh, the man, the legend. I respect Bob, but I don't think he's the goat personally. Whoa! Have a hot, goat hot, goat hot debate. Hot. Yeah, I think the go okay. If we're talking NASCAR motorsports goats, Barney Hall. Yes, Barney all Hall. day every day, Barney Hall is the goat for NASCAR for me. I my earliest memories are sitting in because I grew up poor and we didn't have satellite. My earliest memories are sitting in my dad's 1994 Ranger, listening to Barney Hall and Joe Moore call races and hearing oh. Barney Hall 
is still like it sends chills up my spine hearing Barney Hall's calls of any race ever. So he's one of my favorite. He's like the goat for me, Chris Konamaki, but he's like the dean of motorsports journalism. Um, those are the two that I really look up to a lot and like want to strive to be at some point. So, and one thing is that you, your guys, goats are probably going to be or people you think of are going to be different than mine because you guys, this is, I grew I'm up older in a, too, so different era. Yeah, I'm a little yeah. younger. <laughs> so, you got so Bob though, to experience some of the people that you guys did. Like, I'm my, like, I think of childhood growing up, uh, watching NASCAR and ESPN. Uh, I think of Marty Smith. Uh, marty well. i still yes. love that him and uh marty. ryan ryan mcgee yeah ryan mcgee yeah. i still love yeah. how they'll take time to cover nascar on their shows and stuff like i think that's really cool of them to yeah. continue to show their love and support for the sport so another great he's got a uh what, what's the book uh what's marty's book about something about the southern spirit or something it's yeah he has yeah, a, yeah. He, he, he is like oh, what yeah. Southern culture needs to be nowadays. And I love it so much. <laughs> yeah. I also, anytime anyone brings up Marty Smith is when I think about how Kurt Busch got suspended for uh, threatening to beat the heck out of Bob Pockers at Dover or whatever. And yes. then Mar like <laughs> Marty's doing that live hit like Michigan. He's like, we went to talk to Kurt Busch. We went into a room. We went into another room. He threatened to hit me. And then it was over. <laughs> I just think about that <laughs> live hit every time. Like I think about Marty Smith. Oh my God. And Marty Smith's a good guy. <laughs> I've met him before, actually. Oh, I haven't, so. unfortunately, but I have hopefully not. Signed he's, it. he's a good guy. He's chill. Wasn't he on? Wasn't he in a Nextel commercial? Like probably. Maybe. Oh, maybe. There was one where it's, he goes like, "Junior wins the five hundred all together." Junior. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that was him. If it wasn't, he has a look alike that was in Hollywood and sounds and looks like a doppelganger. I guess. I mean, probably. Yeah. RJ, was that the only one on your Rushmore? Um, I, I, for me, what I've experienced in my lifetime, um, you know, Bob Pockus has obviously been, been a big part of just my lifespan here on Earth. Uh, Marty Smith definitely won. Um, I feel like, at, like if we're talking about commentators too, like Alan Bestwick, yes. someone that I feel like just in the sport, uh, I grew up listening to him a lot. And I think that was one of my mm -hmm. favorite podcast episodes ever that I did. It was uh, me and Tommy Joe when we hosted the driver's meeting. We had Alan Bestwick on. And one of my favorite episodes, I mean, it was a privilege to be able to talk to that man. He's so knowledgeable, knows everything. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the comment section here, like they listen off uh, some great people like Bob Jenkins, yeah. Ooh, uh, Benny Bob Parsons, Jenkins. Mike Joy. Oh, yeah. Obviously, put Steve Burns in there as well. Yeah. Bob Jenkins. Bob Jenkins is one of the funniest characters that you'll ever like if you ever get like again, I'll reference Dinner with Racers. They did an episode with him before he passed away. But like hearing him talk about how he was like, I had no clue about racing at all. I wasn't <laughs> even a fan. But I just happened to live in Indianapolis, which is one of the most storied racing places in the world. And hearing him talk about motorsports is insane. So highly Bob Jenkins is a legend. So and I love that um I was talking to a friend about this last night because I'm going to the five hundred this year how Alan Bestwick basically is their PA announcer for Indianapolis yeah. Motor Speedway. Now yeah. I love, I love mm -hmm. they replaced Bob with one of the other goats. So we might try to get Alan on this show. Please. That might have to be the uh, suit and tie show. That that might have to yeah. be. I, I'll, I'll, I'll buy Instagram. I fanboyed so hard. Like it was about oh two God. years ago. Right at the beginning of 2020, it was like Alan Bestwick because I saw he liked one of my posts. And I was like, oh, my God, Alan Bestwick. And I looked and I was like, he follows me. Holy cow. <laughs> my fan was hard. I love that, man. He is he is so, so good at what he does. He like, like responded to me on Twitter once. Captain. He's so good. He responded to – Um, I asked him about his coffee order or something like that. Yeah. I think, I think we were like part of that post. thread. Yeah. 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 And I was like, that man, he's cool. He would be on my Mount Rushmore. Just I, yeah. I joined the sport. Like I started watching legitimately 2017. So like I'm very new to this, um, but um, so I would say like Mike Joy, Alan Bestwick from like the old races that I've watched and what I've seen, um, probably. I mean, I guess those are like the big two, and then Bob Pockress, obviously. Like RJ, I agree mm -hmm. with you. Like a lot of my motorsports life, he's been like the staple of. So I would say even Bob. I got to meet him at Charlotte, and I kind of freaked out a little bit. I was just very excited, very interesting guy. But I'll add one thing it. in there: just the website itself, Jayski. Jayski. Yes. Shout out yes. to them. Yes. When yes. I was the first thing I discovered as far as like NASCAR media when I was like a little little kid uh was Jayski.com. 
And yes. I looked at paint schemes always on the time there. And then I looked at news, all that stuff. Jay Ski is huge. Gotta Jay's the man. Like yes. he's one of the coolest people. Yeah. When I, um, I used to write for the podium finish, uh, another media outlet. And one of the first articles I wrote for them or something in there, like it ended up being on like the Jay Ski website. And I about cried. I panicked. Not, like, you were a not source panicked, on Jay Ski. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, I'm on Jay Ski. That's the thing. It's awesome. <laughs> It's like, Jay-Z. you see your name. It's like, man. Yeah. I had an exclusive post about Caesar Baccarella on there when I interviewed him about Yo. Mario Goslin racing at Daytona about a few years ago uh, in the Xfinity series. Didn't get to race because they rained out qualifying, but so unfortunately never happened. But it was like my first exclusive report ever. It went on Jay Ski. Even before I even know, knew Joseph Strigley, big shout out Joseph Strigley. We love he Joseph. He DM'd me on Twitter asking um, if that like was true and they could use it on tobychristie.com. I was like, sure, go ahead. Use it on tobychristie.com. <laughs> I work for tobychristie.com, so I, See, life crazy. comes full circle. That's another person we need to have on the show, Joseph. I like, won't do it. He he has to. <laughs> he won't Bro, do it. I <laughs> will make him do it because we're going to have Toby is. on the show at some point, so why not? Toby will do it. Joseph won't. He, he hates it. <laughs> Joseph won't even turn on the camera. No, that's um, true. That's valid. That's it was amazed he came in south of us to watch the Arca race, to be honest. I was like, oh, he's here. Oh he's God. here. <laughs> Good party. It was a fun so party. Good. Sorry, I know that was totally off topic. I just was curious. Oh my god, no, no, no. That's a fun I always think it's a fun topic, especially like depending on when you started watching racing. Like everyone will say someone either Mm -hmm. similar or very different. And then if someone's been watching since like the beginning, Mm -hmm. then they're gonna pull out names where I'm like, oh my god, I haven't heard that. Yeah, ever. I mean (laughs) Hi. (laughs) Adam. (laughs) It'd be me. (laughs) Actually, my my uh probably my Mount Rushmore is kind of unique because you know I follow all forms of motorsports are we just including nascar or can we just do everybody you can do all of them i mean i included economaki who did everything so yeah that's true uh my so steve burns og uh mike joy grew up listening to him alan bestwick uh now we're gonna shift gears quite literally uh bob varsha Ooh, oh, Bob's a good guy too. Okay. Bob Varsha, Steve Matchett, David Hobbs, the OG. David Hobbs. Hobbs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm like, that is the name I do know for yeah. sure. I do love him. And like Steve Matchett lives like 10 minutes from me, apparently. Oh, seriously? Yeah, he lives on the other side of Lake How Wiley. Do you, you know all these people. Yeah. <laughs> I, and you know what? I've actually I have I have DM'd with him uh, quite a bit over the years, and I I actually have. Let me see. If, oh. Let me check. Let me let me move the bunny. Let me move the bunny love gear out of the way. Oh, you still have that? I oh, still good. do. Okay. One the of Halloween his, show last week. I highly recommend his that book, Life week. in the Fast Lane. Yeah. It's it's really good. Like, yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's it's book. I think this is book one. Did the book one or book two of his uh, trilogy that he has. He also has the chariot makers. Here it is. Yep. Good one. And then where's the everyone over the off season is gonna be reading. Yes, the mechanics tale. This one is really oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Don, we were talking about our um if you're just joining, uh you're talking about the uh, Mount Rushmore of commentators, journalists for motorsports. We kind of generalize it a little bit. Um, we have a time for like one news topic that we can talk about. I don't know like which one to pick because there's been a lot of like Today's big news. Today's been a wild day for news. <laughs> this week's been a wild week for news. It's been wild. Let's okay. We can combine. We can kind of combine the Jimmy Johnson and Kyle Busch thing. Let's just do it. Let's go for yeah, it. I mean, if if you don't know, if you don't know, uh, Jimmy Johnson's back. Um, he he signed on to be an owner, a part owner and a part time driver with Petty GMS Racing in about like five-ish races next year, starting out with the Daytona 500. Their car is not chartered, so he will have to race his way in. Um, but nevertheless, going to be doing that. Um, I'm sure we're all excited. I, I should not not ask the question, are we all excited that Jimmy's back? Because we are. But like, what are what are our expectations for Jimmy when he makes those select starts? How do I, okay. you think he's going to do? Uh, I don't... I used to hate Jimmy Johnson. I'll just be honest. Wow, but man. It's kind of, I used to hate Don Hart Jr. too, and now I love Don Hart Jr. Now I'm starting well, to watch As a kid, Johnson. I hated Jimmy Johnson because he won so much. Because well, yeah. he won <laughs> that, every freaking thing on every that's freaking it. race. Um, like, but, yes. Except for that truck race at Bristol. He lost that thing and got his teeth kicked in. I, I think about that a lot. Um, <laughs> no, I'm excited for Jimmy to come back. I'm ha- I, um, I love this. I love the influx of his importance in the sport coming back. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, he like... 
not to sound mean, but the sport was his life. And it's the reason he's relevant in some ways. And mm-hmm. it's cool to see him give back to the thing that helped him be relevant and be dominant. Um, I was a bit weirded out that it was petty GMS of all groups. Like yeah. you would think Hendrick in some ways, but that was cool. Um, apparently, according to a report, uh, let me double check this because someone threw it. Apparently, according to a report from Jim Utter, uh, or excuse me, from Luis Torres, uh, Jimmy Johnson mm-hmm. has said that they're still on the works for a car number. And he says, I think Rick wants to give me the 48. So that would be cool to see the 48 oh. car with him in it. I don't think so. Well, that's I've, interesting. I've had opinions on that for sure. Like as far as numbers, like I right. me personally like just short and simple. I don't think the yellow 24 should be on with William Byer. And I don't think the 48 yellow 48 should be with Alex Bowman. I think at least, at least change the font. Yes. Like the at least change the font because I feel like it's not right to retire the numbers, right? You're going to run out of numbers at some point, but right. like mm-hmm. change the font, make it somebody's own, right? When somebody sees that 24, they're not thinking William Byron. They're thinking Jeff no. Court. Somebody yeah. sees yeah. They're not even thinking Chase thinking Elliott now. for the 24 now. Like, it, like it was always yeah. Gordon. Yeah. Like, you know, the 43 was always Richard and how the three was always Dale. Exactly. Right. I like RJ... what we want at RFK. RFK yes. Rate. Change the font, you. the six bar, now the 17. That At 17 font, font is hot. They changed it. Their own. Yes. The yeah. 17 font is hot. They changed it, and it's more it's roundy. Because it's round, like it. yes. It's, yes. it's, oh. it's tubular. <laughs> RFK is doing it right. Like, I don't know what it is with them, but everything is perfect in my opinion. That is yeah, because like that was the thing too. Like I got mad about when they changed six and I was like, no, because when I think of that old school six, I think Mark Martin. Right. Yep. I think Mark Martin forever in a day. I don't think David Reagan. I don't think Trevor Bain. I don't think Matt Kenza for the year he ran it or, or the few races he ran. I don't even think Ryan Newman. I think mm-hmm. Mark Martin. So yeah. Yeah. Yep. But no, I'm excited for Jimmy. Visual appeal, you know, to yes. so people like, old fans trying to get back in the city. They see those numbers and they think Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson and stuff like that. So hopefully if Jimmy Johnson gets back to 48, that'd be cool. But like, like we were just talking about Jimmy mm-hmm. Johnson, just to be back in the sport and any, you know, fruition, I saw the the owner thing and I was like, Oh, he's owner. And that's cool. And then he's driving. I'm like, just to be able, just for Jimmy Johnson to race five races next season. And hopefully he'll race North Wilkesboro too. I think mm-hmm. that's really cool. And the Daytona 500 Jimmy Johnson in an open, unchartered entry in the daytona 500 is going to be pretty That's interesting fun. hopefully he races his way in i think he'll do it yeah and the, be fine. like part of the statements i found interesting too is like petty was like you know the goal or like he saw the future of like jimmy like taking over where some of the words that he used are like jimmy johnson is like the future of this and i was like that's a lot to that's a lot yeah. but honestly yeah. i mean so, it's fair though like it is valid like I think I, and like, go ahead go sorry ahead. No. no you go ahead oh god i was just gonna <laughs> I was just going to say, like, because Jimmy isn't really even sure where his future stands with the sport. He just kind of, it feels like he's just kind of going with it. Like, he's happy just to be here. He's going He's with big it. vibes right now. He's yeah. just vibe. He's vibing. He's in the right place, though. He's Major doing vibes. It. Good oh, yeah. vibes. Yeah. It's kind of felt, I don't want to, like, hit on, like, like, I guess, like, diss on the last two years, but it just has not felt the same without him. No. It really hasn't. I mean, Especially arguably hasn't felt the same too. since Tony Stewart and them left. It's true. I mean, we're entering a new era. It's very clear, very evident. I mean, new car, new tracks, everything's changing. Um, yeah. My childhood is disappearing in front of me. Adam, you good, bud? You gonna be I'm okay? Not, I'm not. <laughs> Heck, I'm. You know, you know what? I'm not well. No, no. It just, it, Child, no. This is the um, <laughs> this is I'm our- interested. <laughs> I'm, not I'm interested well. to see like the long term <laughs> effects of this because we don't know the. Number one, we don't know how much stake he owns in the company. Right. Um, if if I'm gonna guess it's thirds because we're dividing it between Petty and GMS and Jimmy Johnson, because three right. people divided by one hundred divided by three is gonna be about thirty three percent. Um, I'll, I'm interested to see like the long term that this has and what plays out with it. Um, I think Jimmy's Jimmy's a great ambassador for the sport. Right. Um, I think Don Hart Jr. is also like I think Don Hart Jr. is the best ambassador, but I think Jimmy Johnson's close second. For oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. Because he's like still one of the few people like I can go to work tomorrow and tell a pe- tell the random people in the newsroom I'm a race car fan and a NASCAR fan, and they'll say Darren Hart Jr. and I'll be like he's retired and I'll say Jimmy Johnson I can I can say he's coming back for a little bit so and that's excitement. Yeah. If that's yeah. true about the 48, I wonder if Hendrick would resurrect the 25. Yes, somewhere Ooh. Michael Carey is just screaming. <laughs> happy. Yep, yep. Yeah, Michael like, Carey's yeah. going insane. It's happening. We love Michael Carey. Wait, that would be interesting for sure. Mm. 
I do, RJ, I totally agree with your point. Like, change the font or change the number. Like, but don't, yep. it just, it felt so wrong when they kept the 24. And then especially for me, it was when they were like, Jimmy Johnson retiring, Alex Bowman, you fill the seat of seven-time champion. I'm like, no, it feels yeah. disrespectful. Well, that's kind of, <laughs> that's also just been like Bowman's career though, so far. That's true. Because he I filled mean, the 88 and it's like, it's oh, you're exactly. you're filling the car of most popular driver of NASCAR yeah. history. And now it's like, oh, you're filling the car of seven-time champion. Exactly. The third person lot. in the series cool. history to do it. So like, he's kind of always had that. Like if I, if they threw him, if they threw him like the 25 or the nine cool. before they brought back the nine for Elliot, like maybe he probably Not doesn't, fine. maybe doesn't have as much pressure on him, but it just, I don't know. So yeah. yeah. The also nine, happy the nine made sense for me in a way, bringing it. Because made sense. Cause, Cause Bill. Yeah. And it was so far down the road, right? The 48 and the 24 yeah. is so, so fresh. And it was, it was yeah. so weird to see, mm -hmm. Um, you know, it was cool when they announced Byron at first, like, oh, we're bringing back the Exalta Flames and the Yellow 24, and it's like, oh, it's cool to see that, but it's like, but that's not William Byron, though. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's Jeff Gordon. Well, I want to ask Jeff them. Throwback. I'm curious. How do we feel about the five of them with Larson? I don't. Because when I see that five, I correlate to Texas Terry. I think Terry yep. Wani all day, every day, or even Mark Martin for the short time that he True. drove the five. It was like very historic. Yeah, I am not yeah. a fan of Larson in the five. Any other number, sure. I just don't think he in the five like gel. But no, numbers that. have personalities in NASCAR. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So oh, this is creepy. Sorry, I'm watching uh, Cup Series practice and they're zoomed in on all the image. <laughs> Taylor, I see you. You're on TV. What? You, they're run they're running Cup practice and they just zoomed in on the back bumper of the 18 car. You freaked me out. I was like, <laughs> what the? Heck? <laughs> so, I, I got the... passed out. <laughs> That's right. Sorry, they pan on the bumper. They pan on the tail what panel. I saw it. I was like, Damn it. I am like next to that number, like the the one in the eighteen is where my face is this weekend. I am gonna. Yeah. My face yeah, is you're second in practice right now. Yeah. Let's go. Dang you, Taylor. Oh, you're you're fast. Fast. Sorry, I saw it. I was <laughs> like, Let's go. Let's go. Finishing out the season strong. Kyle Busch, if he doesn't end the season with like a top ten. I might cry. I'm not the biggest Kyle Busch fan, I will admit, but I respect the crap out of that man, and I want to see him end at Jokic's Racing on as good terms as he can. I'm sorry to everyone's eardrums, by the way. I got really excited. <laughs> <You're good. laughs> like, what? Uh, no, I'm happy Jimmy's back, though. I'm excited that he's teamed oh, yeah, up yeah. with the other seven time. Um, I think it's cool. Wait, we got to close it out, though. I guess we're talking about Kyle Busch. Why not? Oh, yeah. Um Kyle Busch Motorsports News, the official announcement that they're going to Chevy. They also announced their driver lineup for 2023. I'm not like totally surprised by the lineup, but there's also some shock factors. They have Chase Purdy going to the number four. That means that John Hunter Nemechek is going away. Um, there's some thoughts that maybe he might move to Joe Gibbs Racing in the Xfinity Series. Obviously, Brandon Jones is leaving, so there's thoughts right there. But then um, Jack Wood is going to be like their anchor driver in the number 51, but they're going to rotate it out with like all-star drivers like Kyle Busch might drive. There's also where Kyle Busch mentioned that Jimmy Johnson might drive the truck, maybe. that's a, That was an idea. Um, and then... Kurt Busch? <laughs> Kurt Busch? You there, bud? Um, hey, we'd but, love to see you back, bud. Burt Kush. That could be, oh my god, <laughs> could be a possibility. I mean, and, and then, uh, yeah, this what do we was think the about biggest. That? This was the biggest wet fart announcement I think I've had in a long time. It's just it was, lame. Like, like, yeah, like you, like <laughs> this is nothing against either of these guys, but it's like you're like, no, no offense to Jack Wood, he's not had a stellar season at all for GMS. Like he's had a horrible right. season by any standard. Chase Purdy had like. Like he's like that's a that's a generated name in NASCAR Thunder 2004 that I've never even heard of. Like he hasn't done. I'm sorry, Chase. You might see this. You might not. But like I, ha you haven't done anything to my knowledge. You've probably won late mile races, and that's cool. But like, it's just like I, I know. Part of it is also I just feel like um, we're used to seeing such high end talent in KBM trucks. Corey Heim. Yep. Uh, Chandler Smith, Eric Jones, uh, Christopher Bell is going for the title this weekend for God's yeah, sake. I want him to and now it's win. like we have these guys that aren't that I mean, granted, Chevy prospects are kind of slim pickings right now, but right. like just these guys, and it's like, oh, that's weird. So it, it almost feels like when KBM went full time in truck when they had Taylor Malsom and Brian Eichler as their Never initial forget. drivers. Never oh god, throwback. Um, Taylor Malsom. Hey, ran Malcolm. for Randy Moss Motorsports. Yeah. God. But no, <laughs> like, I would agree. I mean, 
I, I was, I mean, one, the Chevy announcement is something we were expecting, but two, I mean, drivers are, I mean, they're winless in truck. They don't have a whole ton of experience. I mean, they're, they're rebuilding and that yeah. has to go with, I mean, Kyle Busch moving away from Toyota to Chevy that everyone's moving around because of, you know, ties with Toyota. Like if you are a Toyota driver, you're moving somewhere where Toyota is. So you're going to be leaving Kyle Busch Motorsports. It's all just a mess right now and it's going to be i'm not expecting greatness next season if you are then i think you're lying to yourself um it's going to be building we're building are they um, partnered with gms technically or like is it sort of i feel like chevy, of, okay. chevy is its own kind of thing so they're all yeah. kind of sort of thought with each other because i know because i mean okay because i know you and i rj we talked about it because we're hoping to I guess we can talk about this publicly now. We're hoping to get uh, interview Nick Sanchez for off the record next week. Oh, that'd be great. And we were speaking yeah. to we were speaking to someone uh, who I won't reveal, but they were like, "Hey, you might want to wait a week to interview him because there might be some big news." And I thought I was like, "Oh, Nick Sanchez, the hottest Chevy commodity right now, is going to get the KBM ride." And it's like, "Oh no, he's not." Oh, and we're that's going why Jack I was shocked Wood. too. Yeah. So I think it it's was, really it cool weird. what they're doing though with Rev Racing and going to exactly. trucks. No, I'm excited. Man. I'm that's assuming they're probably going to continue our racing. program. That's really big yeah. for them, just taking that yeah. step to the top three. Yeah. The only question shows is their investment is in the sport. Raja Karuth. Yeah. Go. Yep. Great. Yeah. Where does he go? Did they say anything about an Arca car next year? Or? Um, it seemed like they didn't really answer the question when they were asked because somebody okay. asked them like, "Hey, are you guys going to field an Arca program next year?" They said they're going to. They want to be the best at where they're at. So. Yeah. I mean, they'll have a truck series team, but I feel like they'll okay. continue their development program, right? I feel like they'll still have a late yeah. model program, still have an ARCA program. They have LeVar Scott, a really great guy. Yep. I met him in Charlotte. He's mm -hmm. kind of their development guy right now, and I feel like he will be would be in an ARCA car next year. I think that okay. was his goal, so I would assume they'd probably at least have one ARCA car to stick him in next year. Okay. Because uh, I know KBM, the ARCA program, died today. Yes. Officially, like, it came yeah, out. Right. So Rest they went out on top after the one of the wildest ARCA races I've seen in my Ooh. life. And the other Ooh, team well. that went out on top, won the championship, and went 1-2 in the ARCA West standings is also dead. So Yeah. Good times for ARCA. So I, yeah, yeah. But I hope I feel like Raja will land on his feet. Let's start our own goes. ARCA team, then. They need, yeah. to, they need to build it? some voids. Let's go. Well, I did. Well, Taylor, I did send you that link about a car that's available. You did. Yeah, the 31 out in the West series is up for yeah. sale. So, what was yeah. that 30K? Uh, yeah, 30 grand or yeah. something yeah. like that for a roller. Right, yeah, so. They got a hefty loan. Well, the lottery. Sorry, RJ. I don't know if you can play this in Florida, but the lottery this weekend, I think, is like. He's 18. I can. Cool. I can. He, oh, he can do can? it. Okay, good, good. I shouldn't say. All right, let's go buy some tickets. Let's get ATYL, Toby <laughs> Christie Racing. Yeah, yeah. Arca team yeah. 2023. I'm what all about it. But no, um, we need Howie as a driver. <laughs> honestly. Yeah. Howie, there we go. Yeah, honestly, though, this is a kind of like, this was a lame announcement in my opinion. It was. I think it's fine. Like, I think they'll struggle next year with the switch over to Chevrolet. Um, yeah. And also Tricon Garage is a weird name. That's all. <laughs> That's my it's closing weird, note. But I mean, I mean, it's weird, but kind of cool. Not gonna lie. Let's close out. On something fun and or controversial and or whatever, let's choose our championship picks because oh, we have I the truck race. Ty Gibbs. No, 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 no. We're not going to talk about that this time. I feel like we needed like a good solid like forty-five minutes to talk about that. We'll break. We'll have to. We I need a to therapy session we'll, we'll to talk, talk about that. Y'all yeah. talk about that next week when somebody possibly wipes him out tomorrow. So then we'll have more to talk about. That's why I'm like, maybe we yeah. should wait because we might have more of a story on this. <laughs> might be more context to it. <laughs> might be more context. Yes. But we'll go around in like a little circle here. In the, in the comments, if you want to mention your championship picks, go ahead. If you comment, though, because I know a lot of you watch the stream, like tomorrow, if you comment a truck pick and it's right, and you comment it tomorrow, I'm not counting it. I'm sorry. I know you cheated. Um, Adam, your championship picks for all, all three series if you want. Uh, I'm no. going with Majeski yep. tonight. Uh, I really Tomorrow's. want Allgaier, but I think it's going to be Gregson as long as stuff goes, <laughs> stuff goes his way. And, uh, the 54 is not lined up behind him on a green, white checker, uh, restart. Uh, and I know I picked, I know I picked Elliot to win it all, Yeah, but Christopher Bell has been impressing the hell out of me. I think Christopher yeah. Bell might be your 2022 NASCAR Cup Series champion. That would be a good story for Joe Gibbs Racing, especially. My goodness. RJ, what you got? 
All right, we're going Tommy Jeske tonight. Truck is fast in practice. He wiped the floor with the entire field, so I think he's got a great truck in the race. He's peaked at the right time. Xfinity, I just – the way the season's been dominant for Gregson, I just feel like he's not even going to win the championship. And yeah. they're not going to let Tiger win the title. So I think good old Josh Berry is going to be sitting there. With oh, the nice. Give me a good storyline. <laughs> that is my big wild card <laughs> pick. Josh Berry's been nice. fast lately. I respect that. And he's going to survive and win the title. Then over on the cup side – We'll go Ross Chastain. He's got the momentum right now, and I feel like that'd be insane for them to look back and that Martinsville move, put him in the championship race to win the championship. That's my three. Mm -hmm. Got it. Ben. Okay. Uh, This is hard. Trucks is hard for me because I I I have loyalty to both Majeski because I've been a fan of his since his late model days, but I also have loyalty to Ben Rhodes because he's a fellow Kentucky native because he's from Louisville. Um, I'm going to go Majeski, though. I think that he now that he's figured out how to put a race together and done it twice, I think he, I think the world is his to take. I think he's got it wrapped up. Um, I think Zane Smith's going to give him a run for his money though tonight, but I, I'm Majeski, I think, has got it. I think it's his year and finally his time to shine. Uh, Xfinity, I think, continuing the theme of times to shine, I think it's finally all guys. I think he's lost it so many different ways and so many different occasions. So many possibilities. I think it's finally his time. I think that someone's going to kill Ty Gibbs like halfway through the race and just (laughs) junk him into turn three, like flat footed. Um, And I think that's probably going to be Noah Gregson or uh, (laughs) Brandon Jones, honestly. Uh, Money on Jones. I think it's all (laughs) guy's time. I think he finally, I think he finally gets his title and finally gets his time because to be honest, like his career is, not getting any shorter, or it's getting That's shorter. Valid. It's not getting any longer. So, um, I think Algar pulls it off next me though. And I got to stick with my bracket that you all said I was crazy on a couple weeks ago. You all, mm. except for RJ, you all said I was crazy. You all said it wasn't going to happen. But boy, the watermelon man from Florida did not <laughs> disappoint in the biggest way possible. Ross Chastain's win the title in the Cup Series. There he's go. going out. He's going to do it. And there's going to be watermelon spread all across America. Wow. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Well, okay. Man's gonna do it. I've changed my championship picks like 20 times at this point. Um, I was on a podcast earlier this week running on scuffs, and I had, um, I think I said Chandler Smith winning uh, the truck title, but in oh, my he's heart. He's the fourth? Isn't he? Wait, is no, no, he? not Chandler uh, Smith. Is he? Is the... he? Chandler Smith. Yeah, Chandler, yeah. Chandler Ty, Z- Zane, and uh, Ben. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, Zane was the fourth. That's okay. You guys panicked me. Yeah. I was like, what the yeah. hell? I'm like, yeah, he is. Yeah. Yeah. I think I said Chandler Smith just because I was like, why not? Um, but in my heart, I want Ty Majeski. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I think that'd be fantastic. So, um, track boy. yeah, so I, I got to go Ty Majeski officially on here. Um, for Xfinity, that's tough because I see things probably being a dumpster fire during that race. I'm not going to lie. Um, see, Xfinity series, the best series. Even RJ and I are on that. So same page. good. Yeah. Xfinity is yeah. the best. Xfinity is the bee's knees. I yeah. think like I want, I want Almanayer to win it. I want Gregson to win it. Um, I think, I gotta agree with RJ's logic here. I'm gonna go with Josh Berry. It's just I feel like the cards are just not gonna be in anyone else's favor, and he's just gonna come out on top, just not having chaos with anybody, and he's gonna win it. And also, just maybe a clean race. Um, for Cup, my original pick for my um, bracket was Denny Hamlin. We all know how that worked. Um, so whoop, whoop. yeah, I know, very disappointing. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> I was like, I was so excited when Chastain won, and then I saw like my bracket slip out from my hands, and I was like, well, <laughs> whatever. Um, gosh, I, I think I want, I really want to see Bell win this. I, he's been so consistent this season. I'm sure he's had a few bad weeks, but he has been so impressive. These playoffs, he's won when he's had to. I got to go with Christopher Bell, but I would not mind seeing Ross Chastain win this at all. Credit where it's due. I, I said it on that first podcast that I, or the first live stream I was on. I said, Bell's got to start doing stuff because he wasn't, he was, yeah. it's the meme of the guy with the stick that's pointing and says, do something. Yeah. And Bell did something and he did it twice. So I got to give him credit. Well, you guys, oh, I'll read your eyes in the comments real quick. NASCAR Taco Bell Cup Series words. Um, You said Zane Smith, Noah Gregson, Chase Elliott, not bad picks at all. And then Matt Deason. We love you, Matt. Um, You said Chandler Smith, Ty Gibbs, and Logano. <laughs> I feel like Logano would be like, realistic not maybe the most exciting but well, it's an even numbered year 22 yeah, and 22 it is an even number yep he's only he's only made the final four in even numbered years and he won it in like 2018 yeah yep that's true. 2018 
You know, now I'm looking back, I think I actually made Logano my pick like earlier in the week. I'm changing it, you guys. It's Christopher Bell. Sorry. He's he's the one I want to win in my heart. So those are our championship picks. We went a little over today, but we had so much fun, you guys, on this episode of Above the Old Line live stream. Uh, you guys, we have all of our like social pages kind of on the screen, kind of not RJ. I don't think we know where to find you. I changed mine. Where can we find you? Uh, at NASCAR Report on Instagram and then at RJ Starcevic if you want to see me tweet occasionally about how cool the Xfinity series is tomorrow. I usually tweet a lot on Saturdays, so you'll you'll see some activity in your feed on Saturday. We are fangirls for the Xfinity series. Yes, we, we love are. We love them here. Guys, go follow RJ. You all know where to find us. We're also all linked in the description below on our main pages. Uh, above the yellow line you know where to find us there as well like instagram youtube tobycrazy.com if you're not following us on all the social media platforms i don't know what you're doing you got to do it um underscore at or underscore taylor kitchen underscore um posting a lot more on tiktok with nascar stuff and on uh oh yeah we got to bring up the rj just go along with it this is tradition here uh I'm <laughs> posting a lot uh, you're ready to go on Twitter. Let's see what else, what else we got. Oh yeah. Podcasting yeah. platforms too. We got to follow us on that, but obviously we have to thank our amazing partners at tobycrazy.com and above the low line DoorDash and shack. I gear, get yourself some really nice shades, blue light protection, protect your eyes and DoorDash. Get yourself some food promo codes. will also be on the screen as we close it out, but you guys, we appreciate you joining us here. Thanks to Howie DC Vino yet again for joining thank us. You. He's always welcome back. Always a fun time, but guys, <laughs> This has been the Above the Yellow Line live stream on a Friday night. Enjoy the championship weekend. And until next time, we'll see ya. Bye. Bye. Later. Stay, stay classy, San Diego.